Hi there, Hub Kirkpatrick, HandymanTeacher.com. Today we're going to install a fan, but it's not a new fan out of the box. If you can look down here, it's an older fan, and it's one that we've recycled from another job. Uh, what I try to do with my pay it forward philosophy is if I get something that's in good shape and I have a customer like this one here that doesn't have a lot of money, I go ahead and recycle a fan and hang it in, in this area here. This customer here is uh, one of my uh, rental unit customers. Um, they don't have a lot of extra cash. And what we're going to do is do this as, as a no-charge job for them and, and install it that way. <clears throat> now what we're going to do, we have this open porch here, as you can see. And what they've started to do is use this as a sitting area. This porch was termite infested. It was actually an enclosed sunroom. And the landlord had us take out the walls because they were completely infested with termites. Even though the termite damage had stopped, we still felt it was better to take it down. We were able to save the roof, though, because there was no problems with the roof. And what we did in the front here was put in new support beams to hold this good wooden roof the way it is. Now, installing a fan outdoors is something that you need to have an outdoor fan and this is what this is an outdoor fan will have plastic blades and not blades made out of fiber like an indoor fan because with all the humidity out here a regular fiber blade would end up bending or looking like this when it's up and this will not look like that and primarily what we have to do is take the blade holder here and reattach it to the blades all right and then <clears throat> we're going to have to suspend a bar up here I've got a piece of 2 by 4 to do that I'm going to make a brace that goes across this way and then what we'll do is the fan hanger bracket which is this which goes and holds the fan up like this will attach to that wooden br brace that we're putting in up there. The other thing where we're very fortunate here is the fact that when we took this out we had electric wall sockets along here so we have a basically a live power line right here. So we'll use this to run a junction box and run it to the fan. And what we need to do with that is since that's an existing length of wire, we'll have to mount this electrical box up on the roof, run connectors into the box to hold the wire and then run the new wire down to the fan and the fan will be hooked up with there and with its existing wiring. We have to make sure that the ground is established from this wire to the fan. We notice we have a green wire here and on any of these house wirings you have your black, your white, and your ground wire. So we will continue to run our ground uh, from the house wiring which is right here. Alright, the first thing we're going to do right here is it reattach the blade to the fan. Oops, I'm going backwards there. We'll put the screw back in. We'll just start it with our fingers. tighten them up with our Phillips screwdriver. You just have to be snug. It's just snug. You don't need to over tighten. They have a little washer on them. There we are. I have to search 
for the other screw. Oh, there we are. fingers and then just give it a final tightening and I've left the other blades already together so that but I just needed you to see that all right and you see here these are where the holes where the fan blades go all right and the easiest way to do this and I'm, and I'm putting the blades on now instead of later because this isn't a hard installation again it's really kind of up to the installation as to what you do I find the best thing is use my screwdriver Oop. and kind of just get that seated a little bit okay and then come back with the other screw now that's kind of holding itself in place and I'll just tighten them down just snug again, okay? Not, not overly tight. See how it snugs and moves away? Now we'll just go ahead and do that with the other blades in the same way. Now we have to determine where the brace is going to go on our ceiling here. Now the porch is 10 feet wide, so we know we want to come back 5 feet. But then we have to go up here and measure what our width is here, so we know how to cut the brace. Now we need a brace that's 35 inches, and that'll go from one inch to the other. And then I'm coming back 5 feet, 60 inches, to right here. I'll put a little mark there, noting that that's the center of that. And then I'll do the same on the beam over here. So we'll know where to put the beam in. 